I saw Siakam, I was like, oh, he's gonna go go at night. <laughs> Bro, look at my head, bro. bro. It feels so hard. <laughs> I know. I my adrenaline was rushing. That shit hurt now, though. After a seven-game homestand, the Timberwolves are heading out on a six-game road trip. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Guys, good going on, man? I mean, we've been a pretty good road team. Hopefully, being on the road gets a little more focused. What's up? Good, What's up? Got to band together on this road trip. Indiana, Cleveland, gonna be some tough games. LA, Utah, like it's gonna be a tough road trip. So we gotta we gotta buckle down and be ready to go. What's up, guys? What's going on? What's good? What's good? <laughs> it's game day in Indy. The first game of a back-to-back. -back. Over the next 40 hours, the Timberwolves will play two games in two different cities. At the team hotel, it's an early start to the morning for staff. Head equipment manager Brian Indris starts his morning dropping off gear at players' rooms before they wake up. Just got an ant lift. With their gear waiting for them, the players will be ready for shoot around later in the morning. And we have this breaking news this morning from our Brian Windhorst. Their star center, Carl Anthony Towns, has a left knee injury. It is described as a meniscus injury and is out indefinitely. The number one seed in the West could be without their second leading scorer. Carl Anthony Towns has suffered a left meniscus injury. Low adversity hits, we gotta be ready, roll with it, and uh, stick together on this road trip. And um, you know, life goes on. We're gonna miss Cat big time. Go lock in on three, one, two, three, lock, lock in. in. What? I really feel confident in our depth and our ability to kind of go different directions. Yeah, we lose some size, obviously, we lose elite talent when he's not in the lineup, but you know, we, we feel like we have a lot of other things we can kind of you know, maybe link up. Let's get this road trip started. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
to close it out. Looked like you hit your head on the backboard. Yeah, I hit my head, I think on the rim. It's hurting real bad. And I landed on my wrist, but I mean, you know, I saw him with the lane. I knew he was going for the, for the layup, and I was just like, man, I'm finna go get this. I ain't never jumped that high in my life. Nasty ain't gonna cap. I saw Siakam, I was like, oh, he's gonna go go at Mike. Bro, look at my head, bro. It so hard. I know, I my adrenaline was rushing. That shit hurt now, though. <laughs> Come on, Fitz. Let's go, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, real man. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Great job, great job. Here we go. go. Family on three. One, two, three. Oh, Family. Family. The players did their job on the court, and now it's time for the staff to do theirs. They need to get everything packed and ready to fly to Cleveland for another game that tips just over 21 hours from now. Equipment managers pack up the locker room. The team nutritionist delivers meals to players and the athletic staff packs up the training room. <laughs> Everyone and everything gets on the plane to fly out by 11 p.m. And another one. On to Cleveland, baby. Go to Cleveland, baby. It's a short flight. The team lands in Cleveland just after midnight. A quick bus ride to the hotel and players head upstairs to get some rest. Equipment managers have one more task, set up the locker room at the arena. All right, so this is the fun part here. We're gonna pick who sits next to who on the roads. So we got all these nameplates in here. We're gonna put them up in the lockers. Like, you definitely gotta take care of your vets first know who's friends with who. Some guys, you know, like to be isolated. You get complaints here and there, but for the most part, everyone loves everybody, so it's it's usually pretty, pretty chill. My key for back-to-backs is mainly making sure that we get in and out of cities as quick as possible, so guys get it. Guys and staff, coaches included, can get the maximum amount of sleep they need so they're ready to go for the next game day and limit the stress of their bags getting to their rooms, you know, guys' shoes being out, all that kind of stuff. Just alleviate as much stress as we can for the players so they're ready to go for game time tomorrow. Let's get it. The next night, the Wolves fight to the end versus a tough Cleveland team. Assistant coach Mike Honori fills in for Chris Finch. And Nas scores a career high. That's Nas Reed, 7 of 10 from long range. A career best 34 now for Nas Reed. Jared Allen, the rebound, and that will finally do it. The Wolves will feel really disappointed not to come away with a win tonight. 113-104 is the final. I thought the guys, just especially the second night of back-to-back, -back, they competed and just a couple of things here and there that, uh, that cost us.
Tonight in LA, the Timberwolves are trying to keep the streak alive. They've played 65 games in total this season. They haven't lost three in a row once. It sets up a crucial matchup tonight against the LA Clippers. Last time we played these guys, we didn't have a single fast break point. We got to get out and turn some of our defense into offense. Uh, we've been doing a little bit better job of that. George oh. Kakin forces a turnover. Edwards drives and lays it in. You see Anthony Edwards in all of his glory. The Timberwolves were down 22, and Shaq lifts his head up from a water bottle and goes, Minnesota's going to come back and win this game. Keel Alexander Walker looking for Edwards, who steps into a three. And it's a four-point game. As Mike Conley hits three-pointer number four. And how about the Wolves? Hit my man. They have stayed right with him. Ooh, Edwards. Shifty move right there. Ties it at 74. Oh, no, the foul by Gobert. And Minnesota down 22 in the second quarter have their first lead. We lost our identity the last couple games, and we found it again tonight. It's defense. The denial. His defense on the ball and his defense at the rim. So there's a lot of reasons that this is a big game. What a night here in LA as the Wolves turn things around and they get their 45th win of the season. Trailed by 22 mid second and they win it by 18. Nice to meet you. Rob, nice to meet you, you too. Appreciate the time, my friend. It's rare for me as like an NBA content creator that I get to talk to someone that gets it. Right. And when I say it, I don't really have a definition of it, but I know that you get it, all of that. And I can sit here and say the sentence that Nas reads litter box smells, and you'll know exactly what I'm referring to, right? Mm -hmm. So I, first of all, I got to talk about that. First, are you ever going to meet that cat? <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe one day. I don't know. Possibly. Uh, I mean, do you want to meet the cat? I do, because of course you want to meet someone who's just like you. <laughs> was there a last dance Michael Jordan locking the doors to the gym and just keeping people inside all summer? What what happened between exiting the playoffs last year in this season that all of you just got on the same page like instantly that we don't know about? I mean... Well, last year was the first year we were all together. Like, I think just it was just a, a mental thing, shift, a mental shift. I think like you know everybody has the same mentality, everybody has the same end goal. Nobody's playing for contracts, nobody's playing for this, that, and the third. Everybody has that one goal. I think, and everybody you know competes. It's, they're here for each other. They're support. I mean, whether it's you picking up the guy off the floor, like it's, it's just not. We're not fighting each other, fighting against each other to um, make a scenario work or my way is better than this way. It's, like everybody's here for each other. Everybody has the support. Everybody. Even like going into like, like Rudy has dinners uh, when he come when we come to different cities and stuff like that. I mean, this, this, the team is completely different than it was last year. We were just talking about your motivations and and your desire to still have this fire that you made it thus far. And I wanted to use that as a segue. Now, like, is six man on that list? One hundred percent. Before going into this year, uh, I mean, obviously there were talks about it, but it, my, my main goal was to win. Obviously, that's, that's always the main goal. But it's like for, for my personal brand, I, I definitely want to be a six man of the year. I think that's what kind of what a six man of the year kind of brings to the table is, you know, the desire to want, the will, the, you know, the, to, to have that leadership off the bench, to, you know, to be a guy who, you know, can contribute in any way, shape or form. Whatever the case may be, I'm going out there and I'm going to perform. And the goal is to win. And I think, you know, being at the top of the West, like, I, like, like you stated before, is the goal of, of the whole NBA being on top of the West and to win the championship. So I think... Um, as, as, as far as we gotten this far, I mean, obviously, season's not over yet, but to this point, like, that's, that's where we are, and I think that's kind of where, where it should be. Nas is somebody who gets it, right? And he's unique in so many ways with his, his handles, the, the Jelly Fam, being a center with the, with the coolest handles, let's be honest. Um, and I'm not just saying that because this is, I'm talking to Timberwolves fans, but he's got the coolest handles in the league for a center. If you have the answers, you don't really want to share them while you or playing full time against opponents that are studying you and watching tape. But, you know, for him to just be authentic and genuine about it is everything I anticipated as a content producer. That's all you really ask for is authenticity and honesty. I appreciate you, Nas, and I appreciate the Timberwolves for the opportunity to. I think we're done, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you uh, taking the time, my friend. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah.
The Wolves won against the Utah Jazz on Saturday. Today is the last day of the road trip, and they're hoping to secure a win again tonight. Another day, another doubt. Another day, Kyle, rematch against the Jazz here. You guys got off to a slow start in that first half. Were you guys just a little bit out of sync? I mean, Nas mentioned post game a little bit rusty. Coach mentioned it as well from, from having three days off. Yeah, just maybe having three days off had a little of an effect, but uh, we we'll to get back to it tonight, play a good 48 minute game. Hey, listen up. It's one of those games, you, get, you know, same team two nights later. It's about our mindset. Four and two sounds a lot better than three and three on this road trip. Here we go. Let's go. Go Wolves on three. One, two, three. Wolves. It's game time. Timberwolves versus Jazz. To wrap up their six-game, 13-day road trip, the Wolves begin their rematch against the Utah Jazz. But things aren't off to a good start. We knew we were rusty. We looked a little kind of sluggish. You know, just told the guys, keep moving the ball. You know, shots will go down. Uh, we weren't going to be rusty in the second half, and they weren't. Ant was the spark that set the team ablaze. Edwards gets it. Oh my gosh! Anthony Edwards just climbed to the top floor! Dunked on top of John Collins! He is sensational. That was an outstanding dunk. He was so high up, he had to throw the ball down into the rim. That might have just solidified it right there. Answer the face of the league now. Woo! Golly, that dunk was wild. Nasty. And a dunk you will see for years to come. Hey, that's my best dunk of my career, I'm not going to lie. I thought that was really what kind of flipped the game around for us, just from an emotional point of view. We, we needed a really big play. The Timberwolves once again solidified a victory over the Jazz. Huh? I gotta give it to Colin. Yeah! Hey, believe that on three. Believe that! Yeah! Hey, and this the man that set it up right here. So I threw the end, and as I threw it, he just like he just took off. Like he hey. dribble. Hey, I was no that yeah, yeah, you're right. Like standing, like That's dunk of the decade. It, give, it gives me chills, man, because like I always dreamed of like dunking on somebody like that, and you know, watching like Vince Carter jump over somebody at the uh, USA stuff, or like you know, watching T Mac. So I always dreamed of like dunking on somebody like that, and that was like my favorite one of all time. <laughs> 